Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at the memory. But before that, this video is brought to you by Lawrence Anderson and Will Houseman. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the memory map you can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to the map of memories. This map consists of 205 hectares divided into 150 fields, 17 of which are meadows. The smallest field is 0.2 hectares. Meanwhile, the largest field is 3.6. This map includes 10 forested areas, two areas with grapes and olives. There is a grape and olive farm, as well as two farms with cows. We have a pig farm, a horse farm, a chicken coop area with two large chicken coops, a sheep farm, as well as a BGA and contractor yard. This map includes multiple cell points, apple, pear, and cherry orchards, some custom productions like a bakery that will also produce chocolate cake, cheesecake, and apple pie. There's also a train line and 100 Elm Creek collectibles. Now, there are two variants of this map, and I'll explain those here in a little bit. There are also 12 required mods, of which only 11 are actually listed on this page. The mod that is missing is the cattle pins for beef cattle. And it's important that you understand that because if you are going to load this map up on a dedicated server, if you do not have that activated, the map will not load, and the map also conveniently will not tell you what is missing. In addition to that mod, we also then need the universal porch roof, large placeable chicken pen, old brick buildings pack, pig shed, old wooden shed, cow barn big with lizard mix feeder, bale storage, stall for beef cow, farm gate pack, large old chicken coop, and the eight bay double cow shed. Now, as I mentioned, that there are two variants of this map. We have the standard variant of the map, which is right here, the memory. And then we have the premium edition version of the map. If you have the premium edition and you think you might be using the premium edition soup factory, preserved foods, or potato processor, then load up the premium edition. This is the version of the map that we are gonna be using for this tour. If you don't have the premium edition or you're not all that interested in using those three productions, then load up this version of the map. And where you have those three factories placed in the premium edition, you will have just standard building sites. But again, for this purpose of this video, we're gonna go ahead and load up the premium edition version. In addition to those required mods, we are gonna be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. There are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you happen to load this map up in farm management or start from scratch, the farms will be built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode, except they do not have any starting machinery. In addition, of course, you do not own any land in those alternate game modes. Now, if you do happen to have a low-end system, I did test this on a system that uses AMD integrated graphics, and I had no issues whatsoever in maintaining a nice, solid 60 frames per second. Now, I will say that this map is loading up a little bit slower this time around. Um, this is this is my third time basically recording this video. I was not satisfied with the two other versions of the recording, so we're just loading this up for a third time here. So, third time's a charm, right? So, I'm not really sure why it took that long to load in. It didn't take that long to load in on my other attempts. Let's go ahead and take a look at our... PDA. And you see we have a big 
area down here in the south west corner that is going to be predominantly forest which makes the arable part of the map only the 200 and some hectares that the description listed we do have all our standard crops available to us in fs22 available on this map and if we take a look at our farmland screen you'll see we start out in farmland id 176 that is the main starting farm we'll have cows and chickens available here we also then own farmland id 28 25 and 31. Now, in addition to the main starting farm, there are several other farms on this map. We have an arable farm up here, farmland ID 177. That is going to focus on grapes and olives. That can be bought for $255,780. We have a cow farm that is located here at farmland ID 170, and it can be bought for $2 million. We also have a pig farm at farmland ID 171 for $774,000. Farmland ID 172 is going to be an area with two chicken coops that have been bought for $240,000. Farmland ID 173 is going to be a horse area and it can be bought for $289,000. There is a sheep area, Farmland ID 173, for $306,000. We have a biogas plant slash contractor yard for $1.5 million, also at Farmland ID 175. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, and then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We're then going to be able to cross reference this with our field calculator screen to see the specific sizes of each particular field. And here we have our field calculator screen. Start by owning field 25, 28, and 31. And they all range in size from right around one half of a hectare. From the description, we learned that these fields are basically going to be smaller than 3.7 hectares in size. So I'd say this map would be pretty good for small to medium sized machinery. As far as the precision farming soil map goes, this map is using the French soil map, also better known as the default soil map. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. Our starting farms are going to be a mix of loam and silty clay. And then we do have a fair bit of silty clay to the south and north of the center of the map. Taking a look at our crop counter, we are making use of the standard FS22 crop counter here on the memory. And looking down through our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, oil, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through all of our base game production items, we once again do continue to see that we can indeed sell all the base game productions as well. We do have the ability to buy and sell bulk lime. We also do have the ability to sell our stones if we are playing with stones enabled. If we are playing with the farm production pack, we do have the ability to sell our washed root crops, but we do not have the ability to sell our platinum expansion production items, which is a little bit of a shame because we do have so much of the map that is set up for forestry. We do have the ability to sell our premium expansion productions and crops. In addition, if you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of your separated manure. And those playing with straw harvest, we do have the ability of getting rid of our hay and straw pellets. Now, as far as added productions, we have apples, pears, and cherries on this map. We also have apple, cherry, and grape juice. Now, oddly enough, chocolate cake, cake, and or cheesecake, and apple pie are new productions that are a part of this map, but for whatever reason, we do not have sell points for those, nor do we have a sell point for lump sugar. Now, I have to think that maybe somewhere in the Giants testing process, some XMLs got mixed around and we lost the ability to sell these new products. So hopefully in a future update on the Mod Hub, we'll have the ability to sell these new products back again. 
With respect to our starting fleet, we do own all of our starting machinery. None of it is leased, but a lot of the starting machinery does have a fair bit of operating hours and is somewhat subject to different levels of maintenance. So if you are looking to clear the house of your starting machinery, you may want to repair some items first in order to get top dollar. We do have a chicken pen and two cow sheds on the main starting farm. We do not have any animals at the start. We do have contracts available on this map. And we also own several raised beds here on the main farm. We have four of those actually. And those are gonna accept water and are gonna output tomatoes, lettuce, or strawberries. Then lastly, this map does have the 100 Elm Creek collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out the Zetor HSX120 small tractor, a Massey Ferguson 3670 medium tractor, and the top liner Dutzfar 4090H harvester. We also have the 4090H header and header trailer. We've got our 1986 pickup truck, the Karat 140 TD trailer. We have the Sinto 4000 Super Cultivator. We also have the KG 3001 Super Power Harrow, and the Power Harrow is often combined with this cedar and the Sintya 3000 Super Cedar. We have a Super Cease 800 slurry tanker, the GMD 4411 side mower, and the Alpine Hit 4.4H tether. We continue our grass work with the GA4731 wind rower and the Zelon CFS 2501DO forage wagon. If you'd rather bail, then we have the Pottinger Impress 125F Pro round baler. We have the GA no, the RA142 TMR mixer, as well as the ABI 1600 liquid tanker. We have the Q5M front loader arms. And for the front loader arms, we have the silage cutter, round bale fork, and the universal bucket. We also have a 600 and 1000 kilogram front weight. And we have the MHAL432035 flatbed trailer. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. As far as our main starting farm, it is literally right down the road from where we loaded in. For the very first time, on our way down here, we do have a water fill trigger. And here we are at our starting farm location. We have a wardrobe trigger and a sleep trigger here at the farmhouse. We have our chicken coop, so we have our eggs. We have a delivery point for our chickens, 500 chickens in total. And then we have our food trough. We have one of our two cow pastures here. So I will admit, I do not know if this is slurry or milk. It's one or the other, but you definitely don't want to get them mixed up. But there isn't any sort of visual indicator as to what this one is. We have our food and straw. And then we have our other, don't know, is this milk? Is this slurry? It would be nice to have maybe a hose there for slurry or a milk jug to give us a good clue. We're gonna be able to have a total of 45 cows in here. We got some nice storage for our vehicles and machinery. And those really nice looking sheds. We have two pull through silage bunkers, one there. Then we have a smaller one. We have bale and pallet storage. Total of 200 cows in this barn. This is going to be our milk point. Our food trough is going to be inside of here, as well as our, our straw trigger. Straw, what I'm trying to say. Our slurry point is going to be around the back. We have a farm silo located right here. 
Then we have another bale and pallet storage area. And then we have a fuel and a farm maintenance trigger. Now, as far as buildings being sellable and customizable here at the farm and basically at the other farms on this map. While we can't sell most of the buildings here on this farm, there are deco elements that will remain. For example, the hedges around the raised beds here, they remain. And a lot of the deco elements over here at our workshop are also going to remain, even if the triggers go away, even if we sell the shed and the roof over this area. As a result, we are going to have to take some points off with respect to the main farm and other farms being customizable. So here we have a raised beds, right? We have one, two, three, four water triggers. Then we have our interactive icons right there. And I can only speculate that our pallets are going to spawn there and there here and here. Now let's kind of go clockwise around the map as we go and take a look at the other farms that are available. Just to the north and east of our starting farm, we have the first other farm and this is going to be mainly set up for olives and grapes. Of course, you will need to buy those before the triggers will pop up. And once you do that, we do have our farm silo. We have a couple of sheds here. We have a fuel storage tank. We have a wardrobe and sleep trigger. And then in our garage, we have the vehicle workshop. As we continue to make our way across the northern part of the map, let's just go ahead and kind of take a look across. You see we have some rolling fields here. We shouldn't have too much issue with respect to vehicles being two horsepower requirement based on their power requirements and being able to properly work these fields. But I would suggest working across the incline as opposed to working up and down. We have our main large cow farm located here and it's basically split up into two areas. We have our farm buildings here and then we have the cow areas up there. Here we have a sleep and wardrobe trigger here at our farmhouse. And then we have our two raised beds, two more raised beds. So we have water and interactive icon and water and interactive icon for that one. It's a nice vehicle and implement storage. We have fuel and a workshop trigger. We have a farm silo. And that is pretty much the area down here. If we make our way up the hill, we're gonna come to the cow farm portion where we have the cows. So we have three pull through silage bunkers over here to the left. This is gonna be a large cow shed with auto feeding. So we have our mineral feed. We have hay, straw and silage dump points there. We have slurry storage. If you do wish to feed these cows manually, well, we can do so from inside of here. This is also going to be where our straw trigger is. We have our slurry point for the cows, our milk output 
And then inside of here is where we're going to deliver our cattle. 500 cows in total. And then we come over here to two more cow buildings. And then we begin. We have bale storage located right here. So we have a slurry point. We have our cow buy point. And we have our food and straw trigger. Slurry, another 150. Food and straw. Now this appears as if it's set up as a manure heap, but we don't get the pop-up that says manure heap. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's where we're going to be able to draw out milk. And then we have two more cow pastures up here. We have open cow pastures, and these two are going to accept 200 cows each. So we have our drop-off, we have our food trough, we have our milk point. And then we have another drop off. Food trough and milk point. And that is going to be our cow farm. Now we keep running at this angle. We should come over here. See the mountain area. And then just at the base of the mountain area to the east, we're going to have a pig farm. So here we have our pig farm. And at our pig farm, we have our wardrobe trigger and our sleep trigger. And then we have a garden area. So we have our water point. We have our interactive icon for the garden. And the garden is going to be those two plots there. And your guess is honestly about as good as mine. Oh, it's right there. It's hidden away. Indicator markers are hidden away. I don't really like it when map authors go and hide things in the grass. But we do have a pallet output there. Some nice implement vehicle storage. We have slurry storage over there. And then our farm silo is also going to be on the other side of this barn. On the other side of this container, we have a fuel trigger. We have a maintenance trigger, which is right here. And the activation icon is going to be inside of the shed. As you can see there. Then we have two pig areas. Food. Slurry. Food. Slurry. And each pig area is going to be set up for 170 pigs. And that is the pig farm. Our chicken coops are located down here in the southeast corner. Now, all we have down here are two chicken coops. There's no other kind of accessory buildings. And these chicken coops are set up exactly the same. So we have our dump point for our food. We have our chicken delivery, 2,000 chickens each. And then inside here is going to be where our eggs are going to spawn. And there 
there's another 2,000. So 4,000 total chickens down here. Now we're coming over to a horse farm. And here at the horse farm, we've got a nice practice area set up. We have an open horse pasture, which will support 16 horses. And we have our food. And then the other horses are going to be here inside this building. So we have our food. And then another 14 horses available there. So a total of 30 horses are going to be available to have here at this area. And we're going to make our way around the base of this mountain to the sheep area. The sheep area has an open sheep pasture and then two sheep barns, if you will. So we have the open sheep pasture here on the hillside for 200 sheep. We have our food and then we have our wool. Now this building is a little bit confusing. So we have a trigger here. That's a dump point or something. We have a, the trigger here, which is a fill point for something. We have markers here, which may or may not be where our wool outputs. This might be where our wool outputs. We have our food trough. And then we have our sheep delivery point, 65 sheep in each of these buildings. And these suspicious triggers are replicated. Dump point, fill point, mysterious point, even more confusing point. Then we have our food point, and then we have our delivery point. Who's on point? I don't know. And then that should fill up all of the animal areas. Let's go ahead and check that out. You see all of the various animal areas that are pre-placed on the map are filled out here. And with respect to our animal food requirements, it is all fairly standard. So back here to our animals, back here to our sheep. Okay, nothing odd is showing up here, like they having the need for water or them outputting milk or something else. They output wool and they intake grass. That is it. Pretty standard. Just north of this sheep area is a biogas plant. And the reason I call this biogas plant also a contractor area is because typically biogas plants don't have farmhouses. So we have a farmhouse here with a sleep and wardrobe trigger. We also have a farm, or a farm silo. And we have a large contractor shed. We have a fuel point and we have a vehicle service center here at the contractor yard. Contractor yards also typically don't have bale and pallet storage of which that's what we have right here. We also have two pull through silage bunkers. We have our digester. So we have two digesters or interactive icon there. We have our dump point for slurry and manure. Then on this side, we have our fill pipe for our digestate. Now there's something else here at the BGA contractor area. And that is that we have a sugar beet cutter. So this will cut sugar beets into sugar beet cut. We have our dump point and then we have our output pipe right there. And now's probably as good as any time to go ahead and run down through the other productions that are available on the map. So we've already talked about the raised beds. There's a total of six raised beds, four at the starting farm, and then two more over at the 
cow farm. We've got the garden area, which I believe is at the pig farm. Then we have our BGA, fairly standard biogas plant. Then we have our sugar beet cutter, sugar beets in, cut sugar beet out. We have a standard sawmill, so wood in, planks and wood chips out. Our bakery is customized. Again, we can produce chocolate cake, cheesecake, and apple pie. But for whatever reason, some sort of mistake has been made. We don't have the ability to sell any of those custom outputs of chocolate cake, cheesecake, or apple pie. Look for a map update in the near future to add that back in. We have a fairly standard dairy with butter, cheese, and chocolate. Oil, not oil, our grain mill, our old grain mill for our wheat, barley, oat, and sorghum flour. Fairly standard spinnery and tailor. Then we have a juice factory, which is gonna be a modified grape processor. That's gonna be able to make raisins and grape juice, as well as apple juice and cherry juice. Entering us, the apple juice also includes pears. Our cereal factory has three recipes for cereal. We have our fairly standard cereal here in honey, raisins, oats, and corn. Or, well, we can have honey, chocolate, oats, and corn. Or we can just have honey, oats, and corn for our cereal. We have a fairly standard oil mill, as well as a sugar mill. But the sugar mill also now has the ability to make lump sugar. Sadly, that is another one of those productions that we currently can't sell without putting, let's say, the sell everything point down. And that is going to take regular sugar and make lump sugar. We have carpentry, fairly standard, woods and plank, in order to make furniture and wood chips. Our apple, cherry, and pear areas are going to take manure and water to make apples, cherries, and pears. And then if you are playing with the premium edition version of this map, we have the soup factory, preserved foods, and potato processor. These are all part of the premium expansion and are all pre-placed on this map if we are making use of that variant of the map. If we are making use of the standard variant of the map, well then don't worry, those won't be on the map, but you'll also now have three additional building areas that you can put your own things down should you so wish. Now we're making our way back over here to our starting farm for the purpose of then doing our fly around where we take a look at the cell points and the productions and other points of interest. So again, with respect to farms being customizable, we're gonna take off a half a point because a lot of the buildings at a lot of the farms can be sold, but there are several deco elements scattered around all of these farms that are not sellable. And as such, well, that is gonna leave us in kind of a interesting predicament if we do want to customize our farm. One of the big things that is prominent on this map is this large mountain here approximately center of the map. It is splitting the map. We have a nice town here and then we have kind of a little town area on the other side over at the western edge. Sorry, the eastern edge of the map. And down here we have our Modified Bakery, Dump Point, Pallet Point, and Interactive Icon. We have our Old Mill, Interactive Icon, Pallet Point, and our Dump Point. Here we have our Tailor, Interactive Icon, Dump Point, and our, well, our Pallet Point, sorry, is not indicated. Yes, it is. It's over here. Oh, that's the spinnery. Convenient, we have the spinnery and the tailor right next door to each other. But I would like to see indicator markers there. Interactive icon and our dump point there. Here we have the soup factory. And again, if we were running the standard version of the map, then this would just be a buildable lot. So we have our dump point, interactive point, and pallet spawn point there. We have our cereal mill, pretty standard there. We have our dairy, 
And again, for whatever reason, currently we do not have the ability to sell our chocolate cake, cheesecake, or apple pie from the dairy right there. We have our sugar factory. And again, watch out with respect to lump sugar until we have a map update. Let's have our dump point. For sugar beet. So this is sugar beet sale. Sorry. Sugar beet production. Sugar beet sale. Enter at the point and now it's spawn point. Then here we have the BGA and all of its assorted triggers that we've already taken a look at. Then we have the sheep area here and all its assorted triggers, which we've also already taken a look at. Making our way south down to the dock area, the waterways. We have our horse farm, which we've already looked at. And then we've got several cell points down here. We also have a train transfer station. So we have a pallet goods sale there. We have a grain silo at railway. We're gonna have a rent trigger there and we're gonna have our so here's our dump and fill point for the silo. We have our rent train trigger there. And we have our dump and fill point here for the train. It would be nice to have seen this indicators as well. And again, we are right here on the edge of the map. So every little square inch of this map is being made use of. Now we're making our way around to where our chicken coop was. Here we have that little smaller village. It's just a little deco village. Would have been nice to have seen maybe a cell point there. Just to make use of that area a little bit more. We have our chicken coops. And then we have our sawmill. We have our carpentry. And then we have a cell point for wood chips and then a spawn point. Well, that's going to be our cell point for stones. Cell point for wood chips. We have our pallet spawn point there. Our carpentry. Then we have our animal dealer. Now this is going to be the ability to buy bulk mineral feed, pig feed, and TMR. We have a grain cell point here at the animal dealer as well as a bale cell point. And this is going to be our Farmer's Market, where we have both a water fill trigger and a cell point. Coming to the eastern side of the mountain, here we have that pig farm we mentioned. North of the pig farm. Well, this is where we're going to find our vehicle dealer. So we have our fuel point for the map. We have our dealer maintenance trigger. And then we have our dealer trigger itself. And then a decent area here for our vehicles and implements to spawn. As far as getting out of the dealership, well, we've got a 
a decent area here. Not too wide, not too terribly narrow. And then up, we have the ability to buy several things in bulk. So we have herbicide and liquid fertilizer. Salt. Solid fertilizer. Seed. And lime. And if you haven't seen like three quarters of the collectibles already, then you just haven't been paying attention because man, they are all over the place and they're not that hard to find. So if you remember, we had two areas of our horse farm, or cow farm, sorry, the sheds and then the cow area up there. Well, we also have a cell point located right here. And this cell point, well, it's kind of got an interesting name. This is the to the open hall door cell point. Yeah. And then we have our preserved food factory here. Again, if we don't have the premium edition loaded, then this will just be a building lot. And then we have our potato processor again here. And again, we're running the standard version of the map. This will also be an empty lot. And that folks is almost it. Almost it. Almost forgot about our three plantations in orchards. Then our juice factory, which is located over here to the north. While we're making our way over there, this map has 23 or 26 productions built in, depending on which version of the map you load. We have a woodworking shop. We have six raised gardens. We have a or six raised flower garden beds. We have a garden, a BGA, sugar beet chopper. We have, of course, the bakery. We have a dairy, grain mill, spinnery, tailor, juice factory, cereal mill, sugar mill, carpentry, apple orchard, cherry orchard, and pear plantation. And then for the premium expansion version, we have a soup factory, preserved foods, and potato processor. So we are going to begin the map at full point here with respect to production being built in or areas set aside or such. Here at our cherry orchard, we have our dump point for a manure. We have our interactive icon, and then we have several dump points for our water as we head up the hill. And then we also have several points here where we can expect our cherry pallets to spawn. Down the hill, we have our pear area. Same dump point for manure. Interactive icon. And then as we go up the hill, we have several points for water and several points for our pears to spawn. Over here, we have our apple orchard. Same story continues. Manure, interactive icon, and several areas for our water, and then areas for our apples. We make our way up the hillside. Well, we're gonna come over here to this building, and this is our juice factory. So we're gonna have our interactive icon, our pallet point, and our dump point for our roots and then we have a dump point for our water and that is going to be it because over here we have the grape and olive farm which we've already taken a look at so with respect to our scores we're getting the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such we're going to be getting the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all of our base game crops animal outputs and productions while we do not have the ability to sell chocolate cake, cheesecake, apple pie, or lump sugar. 
Those are not base game items. Those are new productions that are built into the map. And for whatever reason, there aren't sell points for those. I've got to think that maybe at some point in time during the various iterations of sending this map to Giants for testing, somehow those got removed. And as such, I would thoroughly expect those sell points to be updated and added back to the map in the very near future. With respect to the farms being customizable, we already talked about giving the map a half a point there. Here you can see the large forested area that is down here in the southwest corner. Buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Yes, they are. And then ground textures. Well, let's come down here and just take a quick look. As far as ground textures go, we do have a few custom ground textures or added textures added here. Fairly standard plants and fairly standard trees. So we're going to give the map a full point there. And then trigger and interactive areas clearly marked. I wish I could give the map a full point here, but I do feel that I need to take off a little bit because we had some areas of ambiguity. Specifically over at the sheep and then a couple other areas scattered around the map with respect to a couple productions. So we're going to give the map a three quarters of a point there. That's going to wrap this map up with a score of 4.25 out of 5. Still a very good score on a very nice map. I like that we have two different variants. One that it does include the premium expansion. It would have been nice to maybe just call it the DLC version and had premium and platinum expansion productions built in. Maybe not all of them, but just a few given a large section of forest that does exist on this map. I'd like to know your all's thoughts down in the comments below with respect to the two different variants of the map. Would you like to have seen some of the Platinum expansion also added to that premium expansion version? And then overall, what do you think of the custom productions? And are you going to give this map a try now? Or maybe are you going to wait in the near future for a potential update? So that again, you'll have the ability to sell those custom productions that are available here Again, on The Memory. Until next time, happy farming.